Kia ora no mai hari mai. Welcome to you all. Welcome to this virtual regional showco showcase. Today we're going to be looking and talking to Taranaki. Uh, Venture Taranaki is hosting us today and they have brought in a few guests. And what you're going to learn about in this session today is the general demographics, the statistics of the region, the sectors the region sees as opportunities and has resources to build on. You're going to hear about a couple of case studies and projects that are currently happening in the region as well. And so firstly, I'm going to hand you over to Josh Hiscock, who's going to open up the session with a, a karakia, mihi, and um, then we're going to hand it over to Bench Taranaki. Over to you, Josh. Uh, kia ora, Michelle. Kia ora, koutou. Uh, ko wai tōtara, kei ronga, ko paraninihi, kei raro, ko taranaki te maunga te he mauri ora. E mihi tua tahi ko te rangi nui e tiu o honei ko papatua nuku e tako tua atana i tēnā koroa. E mihi tua rua ki ngā tanga te whenua o tēnei rohi ko ngati te whiti te hapū ko te ati awa te iwi. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Tēnā rā koutou uh, ki a koutou uh, uh, ke kuna i te hui, uh, i te zui, uh, i tēnei uh, atai, uh, i tēnei ahi ahi. Uh, Nei rā te mihi ki a koutou, uh, nei rā te mihi uh, ki te Edmund Hillary Foundation, um, no mai haru mai uh, ki Taranaki. Um, kei te, uh, te, whaka, te whaka timatanga o uh, i tēnei hui i te karakia, uh, he wakataka te hau ki tūru, wakataka te hau ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai. I hi aki ana te ata kura, he teo, he huka, he hauhu, te hei mauri ora. Mauri ora. Uh, uh, ko, ko tanaki diwi, ko tanaki te maunga, ko tanaki te tangata, uh, ko Joshua Hitchhoka hau. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure um, as, a, as a trustee of, of the Venture Tanaki Trust uh, and, and as a uh, general manager at Te Kotei Tango Te Ati Awa, uh, the, the uh, Iwi um, organization uh, for the Tangata Whenua here in uh, New Plymouth, uh, Te Atiawa, uh, to welcome you all uh, to, our, to our call today to learn more about, about Taranaki uh, and, and the exciting opportunities that we have uh, ahead of us for our, for our region. So we're going to start today and I'm going to hand over to uh, one of the general managers here at, at Venture Taranaki. Uh, he's going to provide an introduction and an overview of our region. Kia ora koutou. So everyone, um, and thank you very much, Josh, um, for your mihi and greeting. That was fantastic. Um, ko Vicky Fairley Toko Onua. So my name is Vicky Fairley, and as Josh said, I am one of the GMs here at Venture Taranaki. So today we're going to tell you a little bit about Taranaki, and we hope at the end of our presentation that you are going to be as passionate about the region as we all are here, without doubt. So just to let you know how we're going to actually structure today's presentation, I'm going to provide a little bit of an overview and a few of the statistics about Taranaki as a region. And then we're going to look at three sectors or areas that are very important to our development going forward. And that is the Maori economy, uh, our new energy innovation, and our food and, food and fiber sectors. We'll then finish off um, by showing you how we support enterprise to be innovative and also a little bit about the Taranaki lifestyle and what you can expect when you come to work and to live here. So like all good presentations, what we're going to start off with um, today is a video to show you what we have in the region. The spirit of our Maunga has guided people here for hundreds of years. Today, our lifestyle is second to none. We're flourishing, connected as a region and to the world exporting our ideas and products to the farthest corners of the globe. We're exploring new possibilities and innovating to create a future like no other. We're leading Aotearoa's transition towards a low emissions future to reimagine New Zealand's energy. We're fiercely protective of our unique environment, enhancing and protecting our whenua for generations to come. Taranaki's rich geography is being harnessed with new and exciting ideas by our wildly enthusiastic growers, foodies and beverage crafters. A wave of new eateries and bars to fuel your passions, world-class concerts and events and New Zealand's only dedicated contemporary art gallery. 
along with natural attractions like our gardens, walkways, rivers, forests and beaches. Everywhere you look, we're full of life. You're always welcome at our place. The spirit of our... So that was a little bit of a snapshot and a feel for the region and, and what it's like. So where is Taranaki? Well, I like to say that Taranaki is on the sticky out bit um, on the west coast of the North Island. Um, it is a bite, uh, so it has is surrounded by 105 kilometres of coastline. It is equidistant between Auckland and Wellington, so the flight times are approximately 45 minutes. And we also have a direct flight from Christchurch, which is the main city in the South Island. Uh, just before COVID hit, we opened a brand new airport terminal to cater for the increased capacity of passengers there. Oh, where that's coming from. So the other thing that we have is we are the only uh, deep water port on the west coast of New Zealand. Our port services our offshore oil and gas industry, as well as shipping um, wet and dry bulk goods throughout the world. It is the closest port to the eastern seaboard of Australia with a seven day return trip time. So there's a wealth of opportunities there. It also accepts um, a limited range of cruise liners through each year. So currently that is our population. We're 2.4% of New Zealand's population. We're growing strongly in line with the country. The region consists of three districts, separate districts. There's New Plymouth, Stratford, and South Taranaki. New Plymouth is the most populous and that's where the port and the airport are located. We are a very vibrant and dynamic region, and we're big enough to have all the resources that are required for enterprises to grow, but we're also small enough that things can get actually um, achieved very efficiently and very quickly through the, the connections that are made through um, the community. We've got a reputation for innovation and punching above our weight, and it's a reputation that we strongly guard. So our gross domestic product is reasonably substantive. There are three main sectors that contribute to that GDP, and that is our, our agricultural industry, our oil and gas industry, and our manufacturing industry, which is largely concentrated around food manufacturing and processes, but we do have a lot of additional manufacturing in the, in the region as well. Uh, Taranaki has always been the energy center of New Zealand. And what we are now doing, which we'll, you will hear about later on with Araki, is we are transitioning our skills in the oil and gas sector to renewable energy and new energy innovation to remain the energy center of New Zealand going forward. We're also incredibly lucky to have a monga. And uh, Taranaki monga is not only our kaitiaki or our spiritual guardian, he also creates our climate and our soil we have incredibly rich arable volcanic soil, which is one of the reasons why we're very strong in our agricultural sector, but it also provides incredible opportunities for food and fiber diversification going forward. And Anne Probert will be looking at that through our current initiative of branching out. So we have a highly skilled workforce, very um, high in, in, in knowledge and skills. And we also have a lot of multinationals in the region. Now, those multinationals have created uh, a very cosmopolitan feel in the region with the amount of expats that are, that are currently in situ. They've also given us the ability to have a financial foundation to develop initiatives. And one of those initiatives is WOMAD, which is the World of Music, Arts and Dance, which is an iconic festival that occurs annually every March. It was originated in the UK and it's also held globally um, around the world. We've also identified a number of significant growth potential areas in various niches that we can pursue going forward. And those niches are outlined um, at the bottom of the slide there. They're very much either part of our current sector strengths or they lie adjacent to our sector strengths. And they've been identified because we have the expertise in the area and there's a tremendous amount of export potential in those areas as well. Uh, we have a report, it is not public yet, but if you require a copy of that report and more in depth 
detail into those sectors and the products that lie underneath them, um, you can contact us and we can send it out to you. So that's a very high snapshot of trends. We produce a publication every six months, which brings all the Taranaki statistics together, and that's available on our website, www.taranaki.info. So please make sure you go and have a look and familiarise familiarize yourselves with everything that there is to do with the region. So apart from the statistics and a regional snapshot, what I really also wanted to get across today is that uh, Taranaki is a community that is very much going in the same direction. We have undertaking, undertaken a number of uh, strategic developments over the past few years. And the first of these was Tapawai Roa. Tapawai Roa involved consultation with stakeholders, with enterprises, with businesses around the Monga. And it identified four futures that we could pursue in the regional development. And that is visitor, food and fiber, um, the Māori economy and our energy sector. And you'll be hearing about three of these today. These sectors or futures are underpinned by four foundations, which enable those, um, those futures to actually take place. So after Tapawai Roa was developed, the government then made its announcement that there would be uh, no new offshore block offers for oil and gas. And the region realized that it actually needed to accelerate its transition into a low emissions economy. So Taranaki 2050 came about. Taranaki 2050 involved a massive amount of communication uh, on community, youth, unions, local central government, enterprises, all around the Monga. And the community came together and this is what, in a very, very condensed and snapshot, is what they decided is how we were going to develop the region for the future. That snapshot is underpinned by a number of action plans across a whole range of sectors that are all focused on low emissions and what our objectives are going forward. And the vision that came out of that, that we are a high value, low emissions economy built on inclusivity and sustainability. So like any region, we navigate challenges and we pursue opportunities. Some of our current challenges, they're not confined to Taranaki, they are national and global challenges. And one of those is obviously attracting and retaining skilled talent, um, which is an issue around the world at the moment. And we do uh, have a lot of focus on our talent attraction. Um, another challenge is also, and this is where our fellows come in, is attracting investors that live and work in the region. Um, we want people to come to the region to find out what it's like to live here, to invest in our significant opportunities that exist, and to become a passionate advocate for Taranaki. So that's a very quick snapshot. And now I'm going to hand over to Josh, who is going to um, give you an overview of the Māori economy and the development that is happening in that area. Um, it's, yes, it's, it's my pleasure to be able to uh, walk us through a, a case study on the Māori economy here in, here in Taranaki. Um, and I thought I'd start at the at kind of at the national level. Um, and, and some of you may have seen this. This is a graphic that um, has, uh, is used quite often as a, as a representation of, of the Māori economy uh, in our, uh, there in our traditional waka. Um, to really kind of give an overview as to the types of industries um, uh, that we are predominantly invested in uh, and, and some of the key snapshots here. And I think what's, what's really important to understand around the Māori economy is that it's, a, it's an ancient economy, um, but it's also a very young economy. Um, our, our median age is Māori in New Zealand is around about 24 to 25. Uh, so when we talk about um, these, these long-term uh, strategies uh, that that we here have in Taranaki, um, you know, as we look towards 2050, um, a big player over those next 30 years will be will be Māori, and it will be that that large and, and growing um, young Māori population coming into the workforce and, and really driving uh, the future of the the economy here. Um, so I want to step back a little bit and talk about, um, I guess, provide a bit of an introduction to Ngāiwi or Taranaki. Uh, 
to the eight iwi uh, that, that sit across our, our region here. Um, as I mentioned in, uh, in my opening, um, I am from Te Atiawa um, and, and also from Taranaki iwi. Uh, Te Atiawa here is the Tangata Whenua, um, the local tribe in, in New Plymouth, where our, where our office is located. Uh, but as Venture Taranaki, we work across the region and, and we work with the, uh, the eight iwi uh, throughout, uh, throughout the region. Um, and with my other hat on as, as a, as a uh, general manager at Te Kotahitanga or Te Atiawa, we do the same. Uh, we work with our partners here in North Taranaki and, and, and our and iwi down in South Taranaki. And because there are shared connections um, around the moment, um, we all, um, and we all have our own narratives around this, um, uh, but we, uh, as, as Taranaki iwi, we descend from Maunga Taranaki. Um, our pakapapa is, is linked to, to the Maunga. It's linked to the lands, to the forest, to the waterways and, and the sea uh, all around us. Um, and, and over the past, 12 to 1400 years, uh, we've called Taranaki home, um, and, and my ancestors have called Taranaki home. And, and for us, that's what we, you know, that, that's, that's unique to us. Um, there's nowhere else uh, in the world that has that kind of connection. Um, that, 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 um, you know, for us as Māori as Taranaki, this is, this is home. Um, and over the last probably 30 or 40 years, there's been a, a real revitalization of the Māori economy around, around New Zealand and, and here in Taranaki as well. And, and uh, through the, uh, I guess, the, the settlement process uh, with the government um, that's been ongoing over 30 years, um, some land and some resources have been returned uh, to, to our large tribes and that has created the ability to, to build on our economic future. Um, and, and so when I think of the Māori economy here in Taranaki, um, we're really talking about three distinct uh, groups. We're talking about our iwi, as we saw on the previous slide. Uh, we're talking about our, our, our whenua, our, our land-based organisations. Um, and then we're talking about our, our Māori-owned businesses, our sole traders, our startups, our SMEs. Um, and it's wonderful that we have Huia uh, here. Huia uh, heads up Hitoranga Pākehi, the Taranaki Māori Business Network. Um, and and uh, no doubt with your role at, 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 uh, sorry, at um, Edmund Tillery, we'll be able to give you a really good uh, snapshot of, of um, what, what that industry looks like here in Taranaki. Um, and I think it's fair to say that that um, Māori organisations in Taranaki you know, have a uh, have a fairly significant um, contribution and have been making a fairly significant contribution to the region. Um, you know, we have the largest uh, dairy farmer in the region and, and probably one of the, if not the largest um, uh, supplier into Fonterra um, with one of our large Māori land trusts. Um, you know, we have fishing assets. Um, we have forestry assets, we have land-based assets, we have health providers, um, we have commercial and residential property developments. Um, there's a whole range of activities across the entire, um, I guess, economic activity of the region. Uh, and I'll share a few of those examples uh, uh, further on in this, in this presentation uh, for the work that we're doing in, in Te Atiawa, uh, here in, across New Plymouth and, and Waitara. And, there's a piece there around uh, on the slide around our people, um, because for us that is the most important thing in the world. It is, it is the the, the survival and, and the prosperity of our people, uh, and so we work hard across across the region to ensure that what we do, we do it, we do it for our whānau, we do it for our family, we do it for our iwi, for our tribe, um, and everything we do uh, for our our commercial activities and our social activities um, is geared towards making the world a better place uh, for our for our whānau, um, of which around about 20% of Taranaki's population uh, is Māori, both those who whakapapa to, uh, to one of uh, the eight iwi of Taranaki or, or to an iwi from around the country um, who have decided to call uh, Taranaki home. And we're a very welcoming people. Um, we, you know, one of our core values is, is this concept of manaki tanga, um, of, of welcoming um, and making people feel welcome. Uh, uh, we own one of the large hotels here in, here in town. Um, and, and that for us was an investment into, into the tourism sector, investment into our people and investment into our visitors. Our manuhiri uh, is an opportunity to, to welcome them uh, and provide them with a, you know, a, um, 
a Māori experience when you come and come and visit New Plymouth. Um, so if you do come here, you know, come and stay with us, come and visit us, um, and and learn about all of the uh, the wonderful things that that we're doing across the region. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit of the work um, that I'm doing at, at Te Koteitanga Te Atiawa, um, one of the uh, large uh, iwi organisations here in here in Taranaki, to provide a bit of a snapshot around some of the uh, commercial and investment opportunities uh, that we've we've got on uh, on the go at the moment. Um, there's a large amount of activity, and, and this is, I guess, one of the eight iwi, and it's I think it's representative of what the region uh, as a whole are looking looking to achieve, and um, and really just to provide a bit of a uh, a bit of a view of a of an economy that's, I guess moving beyond what we have traditionally been invested in uh, for our farming, our, our forestry and our fishery assets. Um, we have a vision at, at uh, Te Atiawa to be the premier property developer uh, here, in, here in Taranaki. Um, and, and we say that and we do that for really for one kind of core reason. And that's because there's a very real issue with um, lack of secure housing uh, for, for Māori within Taranaki. And so we want to provide those houses to our people. Um, and by the best way of doing that is by building and developing these houses ourselves um, and, and ensuring that we are providing that high quality housing um, with different housing models for our, for our whānau. So um, I've got some pictures up here on the screen and, and the first one there is, is our, uh, you can see our maunga um, and kind of at the base of that uh, is the visitor centre that, that Doc uh, manage um, up there on, on North Taranaki. Um, and we are involved in a process with, with Doc and, and with Ministry of Business Innovation uh, and Employment um, to uh, essentially to recreate that visitor centre. Um, at the moment you go up there and it's, it's a nice building, but it's a, you know, it's a fairly standard building. Um, we're going to... Um, essentially recreate that and, and put a Te Atiawa footprint uh, on the Maunga and have a building that, that really represents Te Atiawa, that represents uh, Taranaki um, and builds that connection between us uh, and, our, and our ancestor uh, and, and, a, and a building that kind of creates a very welcoming um, environment for, the, for those people who visit, um, who, who visit that and, and use that as, as potentially one of the starting off points for the um, uh, for the Taranaki Crossing project, um, as, as you uh, as you look to kind of do that that walk across uh, across our Maunga. Um, underneath that uh, that logo there, Ka Uta Water is a financial and uh, savings literacy program and home ownership scheme uh, that we've developed um, in partnership with Taranaki Iwi, um, our, our Iwi on our I guess our south um, south uh, western border here in New Plymouth. Um, and Ka Uta Water is, is a fairly in, an innovative model um, that's just secured around $70 million in government funding um, to provide affordable housing um, via, via our commercial, our, our, sorry, our residential um, property developments uh, to our whanau. Um, and we're really looking here at, at um, affordable rentals and ensuring that, that rentals are um, capped based on people's ability to pay rather than market rates. Um, and shared equity programs uh, that allow more of our whānau to get into to get into housing. Um, and you'll see there on the bottom, um, on the other bottom corner of the screen, one of our uh, potential developments. Um, this is Pukakura the Parade. It's a uh, a thirty townhouse development uh, that we're just in the demolition demolition phase of in downtown New Plymouth. Uh, and the aim is that all 30 of those units will be made available to our whānau um, first um, to, to buy or to, or to rent um, as, a, as a way of, of, of um, providing that housing opportunity. And, and that's one of about 10 different, um, 10 different residential developments we're going to be looked to be doing over the next four or five years. Uh, and then there are two, two commercial buildings on there. So as long, alongside our residential development, we're also heavy into commercial development, um, um, restoring, um, restoring old buildings and bringing them back to life and, and, and uh, creating Green Star rated um, commercial uh, operations um, and, and providing some high quality leasing options here in Taranaki. So as you'll see there, there's a wide range of, of, of commercial, residential and social activities that we're doing. Um, as part of us, you know, we are looking for the right 
partner to, to sit alongside us on this journey. Um, you know, we are exploring impact investing models, um, uh, potential green bonds, long-term infrastructure bonds, um, you know, as, as a way of, of really uh, providing an avenue to deliver commercial opportunities um, that also provide social opportunities, because that's the core of what we do there. So for us as Te Ateawa, you can see our, our strategy, our, our vision there, um, Tiho Tu, Tiho Whenua, Tiho Tangata. So Te Ateawa secure, Te Ateawa thriving, and Te Ateawa connected. Uh, and so a big part of that is, is using our commercial operations um, to deliver social outcomes. Uh, and, and we're always interested in, in talking to the people who, who, um, who have experience in delivering housing at low cost, um, who, who have experience in, in um, uh, commercial properties at, 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 um, you know, at an uh, environmentally um, sustainable uh, approach, uh, people who are interested in, in social and cultural investment, uh, that, because that's, that's the core of who we are as, as Te Ateawa. Um, and if you were to talk to the seven other iwi around this region, they will tell you exactly the same thing. Uh, Kia ora, um, with that said, um, uh, I will um, bring this section to a close and pass over, I think, to you, Carolyn, to talk about Ariaki. Thanks, Josh. I'll just share my screen. Kia ora koutou, ko Caroline Gunn, toko ingawa. It's my pleasure to virtually join you all today um, and give you a bit of background on Araaki and the initiatives we're working on. So Araaki is Aotearoa New Zealand's future energy centre. We we're established in 2020 to accelerate the commercialisation and demonstration of low emissions energy innovation. Based in Taranaki, we're an independent organisation funded by the government. The journey to decarbonise New Zealand isn't without its challenges. We meet those challenges head on and help find commercial solutions to them. This is where we see Araaki adding the most value. So we work closely with stakeholders to clearly articulate the energy decarbonisation challenges that they face. And then we undertake a global and national scan of innovative solutions to address those challenges. By innovation, we mean technology, commercial, regulatory, and social innovation. We also support those with innovative solutions to demonstrate their technology and often help them to find their first customer. And as an independent organization, we share knowledge and help connect the dots across the whole of the energy ecosystem. And that's to avoid duplication and ensure coordination. A core service we also offer is connecting innovators, investors, customers, and enablers. So on the screen here, you'll see the energy innovation value chain. There are a number of organizations that sit across this, but our space is predominantly focused on the demonstration and commercialization, where until we're established, there's a gap in the ecosystem. Slide summarizes all of our current initiatives. I won't go into them all, but I'd like to get across to you that our initiatives go across all energy sectors in New Zealand. We share knowledge and insights and also host a number of connector events. Recently, we released a study on carbon dioxide removal and usage in Aotearoa. This provides a better understanding of the challenges and opportunities, and it also promotes fresh discussion about the role of CCUS as a tool that we could utilize um, to, in our transition to low emissions. We also launched a long distance heavy freight total cost of ownership tool. It's a free tool to help freight companies better understand the options for decarbonizing their road fleet, but I'll talk about more about this shortly. We also hosted um, the Taranaki Biogas webinar in January. We brought together innovators, industry, councils, iwi, investors and enablers to discuss the challenges and opportunities within the organic waste to energy space. And the Offshore Future Energy Forum was hosted in November 2021 in partnership with Venture Taranaki. And we brought together national and international experts to explore new offshore energy potential covering technologies including offshore wind, wave and tidal generation, and marine energy storage. 
On the screen now, you'll see a handful of some of the New Zealand energy innovators that we're supporting in different ways. So EMROD has developed a long range wireless power transmission technology. I plan to do a field dem demonstration in Taranaki actually this week, but unfortunately it was delayed due to the weather. So now they're heading to Europe to do an indoor demonstration in Germany, and we'll be back to do the Taranaki demonstration next year. Vortex is a startup utilizing waste energy streams to generate clean energy through using a Vortex turbine. They're currently working through their engagement and consenting of their field demonstration. Invertus Energy's innovation optimizes the utilization of anaerobic digesters, not only increasing the processing ability of existing anaerobic digester plants, but also increasing the energy potential. As I mentioned before, the long distance heavy freight TCO tool is a free tool to help better understand the options for decarbonizing road fleets. It estimates the relative costs of using different vehicles powered by different fuels, such as green and blue hydrogen, battery electric vehicles, drop-in and conventional biodiesels, and standard diesel internal combustion engine vehicles. The tool is a comprehensive Excel spreadsheet that comes with a set of inbuilt assumptions about various factors, such as the cost of electricity, vehicle capital costs, the cost of various fuels and road user charges. We've had feedback from numerous freight companies that have said it is very helpful in their purchasing decisions. But we're also working on a case study with a company and after using the tool further, they've said that this will help them accelerate their transition. The goal of um, the electricity distribution business or EDB innovation challenge is to find innovative solutions to challenges for our EDBs as New Zealand transitions. There are 29 EDBs in New Zealand and out of that we have 11 on board. A few weeks ago we facilitated a workshop to formulate their top three problem statements and we'll share these in the coming weeks. We will then undertake a global and national scan of innovation and technology, seeking solutions for these challenges to test and pilot with the EDBs. With the support of the Electricity Authority, we're working on one of the world's first multiple trading relationships pilot or MTR pilot, and the creative people might like to call it power to the people. The aim of MTR is to provide electricity customers with more choice and the ability to contract with more than one electricity supplier at a single location. More choice will allow consumers to select services that are better tailored to their individual needs while also, also improving competition within the electricity sector. But it also increases motivation for people to invest in distributed energy resources, such as solar panels. The expected benefits include reduced costs and reduced emissions, and ultimately it would be great to see a reduction in energy hardship. I will now play a video that explains this project a little more. This is Clara, and these are hypothetical power companies Clara could connect to, but only one will actually provide Clara's power. This system works, but it could be better. Let me show you. Here's Clara's place. She's got solar panels and an electric car. When she bought the car, it came with 100 hours of energy credit from Blue Power. Trouble is, Clara's with Orange Power. And because of current regulations, she can only use one power company. She can't access this offer. Hmm, not a great start. And that's not even the only problem because remember those solar panels? Well, if Clara has excess power, she could gift it to her kids or her friends or better yet, some people who really need it. Except, they're with Purple Power. Yeah, but with multiple trading relationships, or MTR, we switch on. Now, Clara can get her main supply from Orange Power, grab that deal from Blue Power, and gift excess power to her Fano through Purple Power. Which is good for Clara today, but imagine when everyone has solar panels and EVs. With MTR, we could create an integrated energy system that would benefit the world forever. We could increase efficiency in the power sector and help fight climate change, dramatically boost investment in clean energy, and make power more affordable for everyone. Sounds good, right? We thought so too. That's why at Araake, we are running the world's first MTR pilot. 
When you register your interest, you and your home or business can be among the first to experience the benefits of MTR and join an amazing group of Kiwis standing for a cleaner, more affordable and brighter energy future. For more information, go to www.araake.co.nz. So with that, we have we currently have a, a few cases underway already and a few in the pipeline. So Kainga Order are planning to install solar panels in a neighbourhood up north and will share their excess electricity with their customers who are currently experiencing energy hardship. We are also working with a local community who plan to install solar panels on their midai and to share their, their excess electricity within the Papa Kainga. Also, uh, oh, sorry about that, sorry. And a farmer in Hawke's Bay um, has two large solar installations on his farm and he wants to get more out of his excess electricity. So through this pilot, it enables him to power the rest of his farm and even his mother-in-law's home at a different location. We've also formed a partnership with Ecolabs, who is Singapore's Centre of Energy Innovation. Ecolabs are working with the Western Institute of Technology at Taranaki to develop a test bed for energy innovation for their twin buildings, which were built in the 1970s. WIT has a target to reach carbon zero by 2025, so this will support them to reach this but we hope it also stimulates interest from current and future students to get involved in energy training and careers. This T-speed opportunity also has the ability to be scaled for other educational institutions throughout New Zealand. That was a quick snapshot of what Araaki is working on. Happy to take questions or pass it over. There actually is a question here, Caroline, before you go um, from Rosalie. Is, are you working with new technologies that reduce industrial energy demand? I actually have my colleague, Pam Walkland, who's our head of commercialization, yeah. sitting right next to me. So she will be able to step in. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Kia ora. Hi, Hi. welcome. Kia ora. Hi, Michelle. Hello, all. Oh, Rosalie, how are you? Long time no Very see. It's, <laughs> it's lovely to see you. <laughs> did you want to just ask that question again then, Rosalie, or, do you, or did you hear yeah. that? Look, I, obviously, thank you. Um, you're doing some incredible things at Ara Ake, and uh, what, of course, we've got is a mixture of both investors um, as well as uh, entrepreneurs. The question that I had here is, are you also interested in working with new technologies that are actually reducing industrial energy demand? So rather than just the renewable energy, things that might reduce, for example, the energy demand in refrigeration. Absolutely focused on the energy demand side as well, Rosalie. To me, there is no one silver bullet that's going to get us to where we need to be. Um, and, and the energy we don't consume is the greatest energy of all, right? Um, so certainly uh, we are technology agnostic. Um, and we, we, we try to work with others in, in the sector, the likes of the Ikeas and the Callahans, to see how we can collaboratively get some of these technologies to market. So not just renewables, um, absolutely in demand side as well, where it makes sense for us to get involved. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, if there's no other questions on the energy side, or we can do more questions at the end. I'll pass it back to Vint Taranaki to continue with the presentation. Thank you, Caroline. It was amazing. It was a great. I loved seeing those projects coming through. Thank you. Thank you. So, Tina, Tina Koto Kato, uh, core and probit uh, Toko My name's Anne Probit. I'm from Venture Taranaki and really pleased to be here today to talk about um, opportunities in the food and fibre uh, industry here in Taranaki. We're just pulling up the presentation at the moment. Um, but first of all, why invest in Taranaki's food and fibre um, area at the moment? Well, arguably, there's never been a more opportune time to invest in, in food in, in New Zealand and uh, in, in the world, given uh, there's a real genuine interest um, by consumers for exciting food, for food that's healthy, for food that's sustainable, and they really like to know where their food is coming from. In Taranaki, we are a really strong uh, food and fibre region. We have rich, fertile uh, 
soils and a temperate climate. As you can see by that picture of the cow standing in a green paddock that is lush, that's very typical of our region. We have a strong track record in food production. I'm going to talk a little bit about that soon, but we have some very strong uh, producers and innovators here. And to make it even more uh, helpful for you, we have not only untapped potential, but we've done all the hard work and identified a few opportunities that we want to present here to you today. So a quick update, a quick snapshot of what's here in the food and fiber uh, industry here. About one in five people work in, in the food, in the agriculture and food production industry here in Taranaki. We are very strong in the dairy industry. And in fact, we have around 500,000 cows here. So for every person, you have five cows in Taranaki. We have, because of that, some very strong dairy production plants here. We have four Fonterra production plants. They're focused on dairy and cheese production. We also have some major food uh, meat processing industries, and we're also very strong in the chicken and poultry production industry here in New Zealand. We have many innovators working in a whole lot of areas in the food industry, and you'll see in that, that circle up there some of the examples of some of those areas. So coffee, alcohol, making bread, honey, Many, many of those sort of industries, we have many innovators focusing in that area. And that creates opportunities to leverage and get involved in some of those industries. We've recently been working on a project called Branching Out. It's a two year project. And during the course of that two years, we've been working hard to identify some innovative and commercially viable opportunities for investment here in the region. And I'm pleased to present some of those opportunities here today. We have just released the outcomes of that project and they're in the form of investor blueprints. And you're among the first ever to see those um, investment opportunities. Just showing some of the, the process that we have been through to reach this point. We've done, we've pulled together a lot of research in terms of our soils and our climates, and that is, on our website that you can view. We've also commenced a register of um, areas within our region where, where landowners can say, I have land available here, and I'm really interested in doing something different with that land. So you'll see a bit of a map there, a Google map with little dots on, on your right. And that is some of the areas that landowners have already identified that they are keen to partner with people who might be interested in doing something on their land. On our website, we also have information about our value chains and also insights of market trends. In the last two years, we've also made valuable connections with experts in a whole range of areas on food production and brought them to our region and take them on field trips. We've hosted workshops where they have showcased some of their skills and got to meet people and see in our region firsthand. We have a website with a lot of detailed information about investment opportunities and a regular newsletter if you're interested in keeping up to date with opportunities in the region. So how we identified the short list of opportunities was, first of all, you start with a long list, and we had around 100 on that list, 96 to be exact, and we went through a whole process of considering our soils, our climate, what grows here, what some of the market trends are, um, we cross -match map that with our strengths here in the region or some of our adjacent sort of opportunity areas with some of the value chains, uh, with identifying some of our local champions, people who are really keen in advancing particular areas of opportunity, and what some particular points of difference that our region could offer some of those areas of opportunity. And here is the list of 10 opportunities that, that you can look at that we have forged in these venture blueprints that I'm really pleased to present here to you today. So just going around that list, you'll see avocados, and there's avocado development already underway in the region. Gin botanicals, and also when you look to the bottom of the screen, you'll see hops as well. So there's a real growth 
area of opportunity in that whole craft alcohol area. And because of that, through not only our region, but others around New Zealand, there's an interest in some of the, the inputs that go into, into making some of that um, food product or beverage product. There's areas of opportunity in grains, legumes, and vegetables in our region, and particularly with the, with the shift and in the increasing interest in plant-based food areas. Opportunities in hemp fiber, particularly for construction, and you'll note that as we move particularly towards more sustainable building products. Trees and their value chain. Kiwi fruit, that's also an area of opportunity, and there is kiwi fruit development underway here in the region. Medicinal plants and sheep dairy, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute, and also opportunities in indigenous ingredients. So for each of those opportunities, you will find on our website investor-ready blueprints which talk about each of those opportunities in a lot of detail and they will outline information about each and why they offer investment opportunity here in the region. So giving you a bit of a snapshot of some of those just to um, give you an insight of what you can find on our website. Avocados for example is a rapidly growing uh, area of opportunity which has been developing in New Zealand and has real global potential. Avocados is a, um, is a, is a food item, particularly considered a bit of a superfood and is really in demand here, not only in New Zealand, but of course, internationally. And there's also opportunities to add value to that product. Avocados are currently grown in particular areas within New Zealand, as you will see to the, to the right of your screen, but there's an opportunity to, to advance and to extend into Taranaki with avocados. And some of the reasons why Taranaki would make a great opportunity for investment in avocados is first of all, our growing conditions are really suited uh, to avocados. Land prices be, um, are, are much more attractive here, potentially for avocado development, rather than more, some of their more established regions, such as the Bay of Plenty, um, for example. Our climate, although attractive, is slightly cooler than some of those other areas, and that may create opportunities for a slightly altered growing season, which may mean that our fruit can be produced in those ways where we could capture a bit of premium pricing on the avocados produced. And also there are productive avocado orchards already here in the region. And you'll see up to the top of your left-hand side an example of some of the people already growing avocados here in Taranaki. And there is also a commercial avocado growing group that has been established. And you'll see to the bottom of your screen a table of contents, and that's a whole list of the items that you will find which discusses that opportunity in detail as it relates to Taranaki. Sheep dairy is another exciting opportunity that is also on the Branching Out website. There is the potential for much higher returns for sheep dairy farming than potentially um, bovine, um, you know, the, the, the cow produced milk. So that creates a bit of a, an opportunity for investment. It can be considered a nutritionally more superior alternative to bovine milk and also can have a lower environmental impact um, than cows. So it's a real interesting area of investment. And now is a great time to invest because the, the industry is quite in its infancy here in, in New Zealand, but there is strong industry growth that is expected. There are also existing producers who are currently in the process of recruiting additional supplier farms um, to ensure that their demand for product is met, and they are really keen to expand into Taranaki. And so why Taranaki? Just going down to the bottom corner, because um, our, we have a lot of knowledge in terms of um, bovine milk and sheep dairying is an adjacent industry which um, fits well with the sort of uh, region that we are. 
We are also um, not far geographically from the Waikato, where there is already a very strong sheep dairying area. So not far to connect in to those sort of existing supply chain lines. And as mentioned, there is expansion from the Waikato now coming into Taranaki. And you will see to the top corner, um, a recent news release which highlights how Spring Sheep and PKW are partnering in Taranaki to enter more strongly into sheep dairying. So there is an opportunity for investors to leverage some of those areas of opportunity and connect with some of those value chains. And finally, just moving on and touching on the opportunity in medicinal plants, which is also a bit of an un has untapped potential here in the region. So this is a high value, these are high value products, potentially with domestic and international um, opportunities attached to them. New Zealand can grow a wide variety of quality medicinal plants at globally competitive prices. And there's some really exciting market drivers aligned to health and well-being, and they've shifted to natural remedies, which makes this area of opportunity quite attractive potentially for investors. And of course, medicinal um, plants can be used as ingredients in a whole raft of, of products, which are um, attractive to consumers and also may uh, be relatively low cost to grow with potentially attractive returns. And we've done a lot of hard work for you. And we have, you will find on our website, um, information about some of the areas of market opportunity, the types of plants, and also the sort of plants which could grow well here in Taranaki. And three of those are listed there for you. So just to highlight why our region, well, one of the key things I just wanna share with you is that we have um, not only a great climate for producing some of these medicinal plants, but we have a really keen community who are already growing some of these plants at a, um, at a more lower scale level who are keen to expand and grow. We've also developed mapping tools to show what is grown where, and um, we have developed interests with e industry experts from across the value chain who are keen to connect with our region in this space. So if you're interested in finding out more about those particular opportunities or some that I've talked about of those other ones, um, the, the range of 10 or many others, those, all that information can be found on the Venture Taranaki web page, particularly the branching out web pages. And you're gonna find there a whole lot of research and information. You can download the investor blueprints. You can sign up for our newsletters and contact us if you are interested in this area of opportunity. So thank you for um, your time today and um, happy to take questions later if you have further ones of interest. Thank you. I'm going to now pass to, to Nick. That was amazing, thank you. Welcome, Nick. Oh, thanks, Anne. That was great. Um, uh, kia ora. I'm Nick Field and I'm an Enterprise Advisor at Venture Taranaki and I'm here to represent the enterprise support team um, and talk a little about the innovation ecosystem. So what do we mean by the innovation ecosystem? Well, it's the, the support available to make your new business ideas thrive and Venture Taranaki works to keep those opportunities within reach, whether you're going for growth or social impact. Um, so I'll give you a very brief flavour of why Taranaki is a great place to develop a new enterprise. So it starts with our advisory and enablement support, and we cover a wide range of areas from startup through to export. Um, but really, it centers around the individual business, whether you're a multi billion dollar uh, energy firm or a startup, you're equally important to us. And you know, we see new businesses as the future of our region. Uh, we I specialise, I suppose, in access to co-funding and support um, from central government, and there are over 200 funding streams to navigate. Uh, also with connections to expert providers for business, uh, intellectual property, marketing or logistics would be examples of that, and connections for partnerships, employing new talent or mentoring. 
We have specific uh, support for entrepreneurship through our Power Up programs, um, really looking to build capability, but also a community of new company founders. So that might include uh, business advisory and, and connections, um, and also, importantly, pathways for investment. Examples of the kind of things we do would be uh, business accelerators with seed capital and expert, expert mentor support, one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, with action planning and, and business plan support. Uh, really, in this region, we also focus quite a lot on connections within businesses. So we have a good community. Um, we create business events where it's very easy to network. One of the benefits of being in New Zealand regions is you're only one step removed from anyone you want to speak to. Uh, setting up a business in Taranaki, it's very easy for us to uh, connect you with other expertise or people who have done similar things in the past. So I consider this to be an open invitation to ask me questions or ask our businesses and we'd be more than happy to connect you. So that'll be brief and really I'm um, looking to, to sum up here. We really support uh, innovation across a diverse economy. So we do have a high profile in new energy, including green energy production and agritech, but we also have um, enterprises active in manufacturing engineering, as well as food and beverage products. So Taranaki has several world leaders in niche industry sectors from all sorts of uh, odd uh, industry areas, you'd be surprised at uh, the level of expertise that we have. Also, our fast internet coverage makes it a, a good place for software and virtual business activities. But of course, um, one aspect that uh, will be important to uh, people when considering Taranaki is really why would I be going to New Zealand in the first place? And one big driver is to balance uh, my business and my enterprise with the rest of my life. And I think to talk a little bit more about that, I'm gonna hand over to Rachel. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, we're gonna look into the lifestyle. So Rachel, really looking forward to this session of what it would be like to live in Taranaki. Uh, kia ora tato. Um, thank you, Nick. That was a, a great segue into my segment. Um, I am the talent advisor at Venture Taranaki and I always tell people that this is perhaps the easiest job in the world because we know it's a great place to live and work. We know um, this is a place where your career can flourish and you get your time back. And um, I think in today's fast paced world, we kind of undervalue that, though I think over the last two years, we've kind of learnt that, that that is actually what we're all after. So I'm going to end by talking about Okay, you thought it's a great place to invest, you've seen the wonderful opportunities, but why is it a great place to live? So I've just put at the bottom of this slide that we are the sunniest place in New Zealand. Um, don't let anyone at Tauranga tell you otherwise. Um, Taranaki is New Zealand's sunniest place and we intend to stay that way. So I just want to get you to picture yourself living here. So think about what it would be like to bike to work along our coastal walkway. Winds in your hair, you're taking your time, you're taking in the scenery and you pull up at work and you feel great, you feel inspired for the day. Or imagine that you're growing your own food on a farm with some of the best soils in the world. It's your own farm, you've invested in your lifestyle property. And after that, you head down to the local surf spot and soak in the surf because you've become a great surfer from living here. Now, I'm a parent. I know that parents' biggest concerns is, how are my kids going to do at school? And I just want to put everyone's mind at rest. Our kids are taking on the world. So on my left here, we've got Mercy Jones. Mercy um, is a real star. She was Ducks of New Plymouth Girls High School last year. Mercy went out to see what kind of scholarship she can get. She's taking a full scholarship to Duke University. Um, we're really, really proud of her. She was one of the top scholars in the country. But not only did she get a full scholarship to Duke University, she also had scholarships to Harvard and other prestigious universities. So it is totally achievable. Um, in the middle there, we have Green School New Zealand. Now, some of the fellows will be familiar with Green School, particularly Green School Bali. 
it is a global brand. Our local investors, Rachel and Michael Perrett, um, bravely, probably about three years ago, I think it was now, decided that they would build Greensfield Aotearoa. Um, it's a fantastic enterprise and it kind of builds on education in New Zealand, which is all about living off the environment. And they've taken that concept and it, it's a beautiful space. They would welcome anyone to come and check out what they're offering. So um, thinking about international education, uh, this is a great place to start. On my right there, um, Nick talked about how we support enterprises and some of our enterprise competitions to get people up and running. Some of our students are doing that as well. So here we have Ashkin and Jaden. They invented a plant monitoring piece of kit, and that's changing the way indoor plant, indoor plant companies deliver their product. So all of that is possible from here. So I don't want anyone to think that, oh, my kids' education is going to suffer. It won't. Um, there are real opportunities here. So you've done your work, your kids are in school, you've got some time off. What are you going to do? So if you're a golfer, we actually have 18 golf courses around the Maunga. And I think from memory, it is perhaps the highest number of golf courses per capita. So, you know, great place to play golf. Okay, you're under 80. Maybe surfing might be more, more your thing. So um, come and surf in our surf, surf breaks. Now, four of our surf breaks are globally um, recognized surf breaks. So, and because of the way the topography is shaped, it doesn't matter um, what day it is, somewhere around the moon, the surf's going to be pumping. If you're perhaps not so active and a bit like me, a bit terrified of the water, um, we've got art galleries. Um, as well. So whether it's a niche one to come and have a look at, take your time, find the next emerging artist, uh, head out around the mountain and find out what's on offer. And as I said before, we are the sunniest place in the country, so, and we grow beautiful gardens. So come and just relax in a garden. So it doesn't matter what you're into, we're going to get you covered. So as Anne mentioned, we grow beautiful food. Um, it's outstanding, but we turn those beautiful food products into beautiful meals sit in the sun, soak up a beer. Um, like the rest of this country, we love our coffee and our coffee is pretty exceptional. You can visit food trucks, you can, it doesn't matter what you're into, we'll have it covered for you as well. Now, um, we know that around the world, everyone's worried about the cost of living. So what is it like to live here? How does your, how does your dollar go? Um, what I'm gonna say is, we actually ask this question ourselves. We're always telling people, well, Taranaki has a great value to, to live. So we actually did the research. We proved it. Um, you'll see here in the red line is New Plymouth, and New Plymouth kind of represents the rest of the region. We are one of the most cost-effective places in the country to do your supermarket shopping. Um, we do all sort of say, well, it's got expensive, but um, let me tell you, there are a lot more expensive places around the world where you could be spending your money than New Plymouth. So you've come here, you've done your fellowship and you decide actually residency might be for me. Well, housing is also quite affordable. You'll see here where the average mortgage payments fit amongst the regions and we still offer really great value for money. And take the time, have a look at some of our real estate offerings and real estate pages around Taranaki because what you'll find is that your dollar goes a long way. So if you've always had that dream of that coastal property, maybe this is the place where you're going to find it. And finally, I just want to just finish on where we can see you. So this is one of our latest co-working spaces. Now, co-working is quite a new thing, but it is becoming increasingly popular. And we found that some of our fellows who have lived here in the past have really embraced the co-working lifestyle. So this is at Oakura. Oakura is a small coastal village that is located just south of New Plymouth. And um, people love living here. So you'll see here, we've got Ricky doing his work in Manifold Oakura, and in the background is actually the surf beach. So if he wants to take some time out, go for a surf, he can sort of do that. We've got the couch there. We want you to come and sit on that couch and be part of us. Come and visit. Um, I'm going to conclude by saying no my haere mai. Um, please come and see us in Taranaki. I've put... Our contact details there for both myself and Caroline, and we can connect you with the rest of our teams. Um, we'd love to host you. 
our doors are always open and um, there are hundreds of opportunities here and hundreds of people to come and meet. Well, we were just, any fellow is welcome to come through our door. So Michelle, I'm gonna conclude at that and stop sharing my screen. Um, you may not see that. We're all still here and we can take questions if we need to. Brilliant. Thank you, Rachel and team. That was just absolutely amazing. I want to move to Taranaki and I did not know you had that many golf courses there. That is just very cool. Um, now, Jeff, Rosalie, do you have any questions, any reflections, any comments you want to make about the region? No, just a huge thank you to everybody. Jeff, I'll, I'll hand it to you because obviously you've got such a passion for the renewable energy area. So let me just pass to you. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to acknowledge the Manapanua of Taranaki, uh, Kia ora koto, and thank you for hosting this. Um, it's it's really exciting to see everything that is available. Uh, as, as you may be able to tell from my accent, uh, I'm American, but thanks to um, the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, I have uh, relocated to Aotearoa and am now uh, pursuing and helping support the move to the zero carbon economy through grid scale solar development. So that's just a bit of background on what I'm doing here as a fellow. Um, and we recognize Taranaki as the energy hub for the country and are working here to explore the possibilities for large scale solar. We're certainly not alone in that, but uh, we have uh, connected with numerous organizations and agencies in the region. And uh, just again, uh, have a, a good relationship with Araki and, and Cristiano and, and the, the team there. And again, much of this facilitated through um, EHF. I think that um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the last bit in particular, living in Taranaki, uh, very compelling. But uh, from the business side, I am uh, intrigued by the presentation on the land ownership that um, landowners have essentially put up their hand and said, I'd like to try something new. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to learn more about that. One of the uh, co-applications that we see for grid scale solar here in Aotearoa in particular is the idea of uh, sheep dairying and sheep grazing. It, it, because of the nature of the panels and the structures, it does not work to coexist necessarily with dairy, but with sheep, uh, it's, it's actually a very good and, and well demonstrated uh, uh, co-application. But I think the ovine dairying element is a new twist on that. And I'd be very curious to hear more. I do see from some of the conversations we've had with landowners and with Maori trusts and, and organizations in uh, the Taranaki region, this is an area that people are very excited about for growth. How might that, um, how, how might we merge that with what we're seeking to do in grid scale solar? Thank you. I'll, I'll respond to um, that, Jeff. It's interesting the um, the blend of solar and agriculture. And you, I'm not sure if you're aware, we've got a solar um, farm here in Taranaki, and they've got some some sheep running around in the in the paddock. I understand, and there is a, a study underway um, looking at that whole blend of agriculture grass growth, you know, and blending it with, with power. So it's quite a new and evolving and interesting area here for, for New Zealand and also here in, in Taranaki. And we have a lot to do with both energy and our farming sector because they're both our two key prongs here. Right. And so now yeah. it's, it's starting to kind of merge together a little bit and how the industry can work in, you know, together with solar and in farming. So there's interest in following some of that work and we are interfacing a lot with our farmers who are very interested in rural energy and also some of these areas such as the solar blend with, um, yeah, with farming as well. Right. Thank you. 
I, I'm also curious uh, to learn more as the ener energy transition takes place and we move to mm -hmm. renewable electricity and zero carbon, how the, uh, the Venture Taranaki uh, views the, the workforce transition from some of the uh, earlier and, and incumbent industry into new industries. We've seen with Hiringa, for example, the the production of green hydrogen through renewable resources with wind and solar and so on. How do you view the, uh, the, the labor force transition and training for Taranaki? Mm -hmm. And I think both Rachel and I can respond to that, but certainly um, because we have a lot of capability in the oil and gas industry, mm. is there's a number of those skills which are almost uh, which are directly transferable because they're quite similar into some of the new forms of energy such as hydrogen, etc. And in addition to that, we are fortunate to have a very proactive um, polytechnic um, WIT. Right. We are also um, offering yeah. some courses in some of the areas of opportunity as well, such as solar. But Rachel, mm. do you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I'll just add to that by just saying um, with our regional skills leadership group, we picked energy as the first cab off the ramp. And we've partnered with Energy Skills Aotearoa to look at where is the workforce at? Where do they need to go and what are the what are the gaps? So there is a piece of work that's currently being done. They're releasing it, I think it's about the 27th of July. So any day now, um, around what their recommendations are and where, where they see uh, the, the training needs. But as Anne said, I think there's a lot of transferable skills. So um, the example I always use is a good friend of mine is a pipeline engineer. And now he specialises in, in corrosion and, and the metal side of things. But hydrogen still may need corrosion engineers and still may need. So what we really want to try and do is make people understand the opportunities that are there and that they know that it's not just going to stop because the block off is finished there are opportunities and new energy for transferable skills and that um, we want to keep these people in region. We, we don't want them leaving because they have great skills and it's not just the skills that they bring to the workforce, it's also the skills that they bring to the community mm. and, and what they invest. Well, just a, a couple of other observations I would make is that uh, our understanding, and, and we have not uh, initiated any resource consent processes yet, but our understanding is that the district council is actually very eager to um, welcome new uh, segments, as you've described, to the area. And so there is a, a friendly and, um, uh, I won't say easy, but a well-facilitated consenting process for the Totonaki region. Uh, the other thing that I would add, and this is just from my personal experience, not only is Taranaki one of the sunniest regions, it has some of the best rainbows ever. It's, <laughs> it's really extraordinary. Hence those green paddocks of grass for those cows. <laughs> we did talk about at the start of this before we went live is that sunshine and rainfall are not mutually exclusive. Um, yes, we have great sunshine, but we have great rainfall. But the upside of that, as you're saying, Jeff, is that it allows things to grow. Yeah, nice. Um, a couple of things that stood out for me, which I really loved. Josh, I loved hearing about the move into the property. I thought that was a really great concept and all those new um, projects that you've got on the go there. I did not know that. And I, I just think it's such a great, more sustainable way forward as well. And diversifying EWI's, um, you know, monetary portfolio. I think that's such a great idea and very clever and helps out the community a lot there. Um, Caroline, I liked, was it called MRTs? Was that the, the yeah, I love that concept. MTR. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just, I think I can't wait for that to be sort of more out there. And I'm assuming to sign up, yeah. you, to be on that pilot, you have to be in that region or is it anywhere in New Zealand that you can? It's Yeah, it's all throughout New Zealand. Yeah. Um, there are some, not all retailers are on board. So if you go yep. to our website, you can see who's on board. So you would have to be with those companies. But um, yes. yeah, it's really exciting. We hope, we just really excited to see the benefits that come from it. Yeah, I just I just think it's great because we just need that breakthrough into our, to sort of how do we help get the energy sector a bit more sort of broken up eh? so more entrants can come in and activities can happen there. Um, mm -hmm. And on that, what was the other one I really liked? 
um, oh, the supply, you, that tool for um, uh, supply, for transportation. We've actually got a talk coming up later in the, the month, actually, where one of our fellows who's in uh, global transportation, you should just come along and make sure you're, and also just checking that you're part of Auckland University's um, supply chain sort of like group that they have. Yeah, just so that because you may find you get more um, great conversations and people that you can connect with that are in that supply chain sort of network as well. That sounds great. I'll um, touch base with you offline. Yep, brilliant. Thank you. Rosalie, I saw Josh. Yeah, Josh has had to drop off. Yeah. Josh, sorry, I'm not sure. Oh, it looks as if Josh just had to drop off, but. Um, uh, to me, uh, what I think was exciting to see a region recognize the transition that it's facing and actually beginning to plan for how you will make that transition, particularly in the areas of regenerative agriculture and renewable energy. And I think that will be real music to a lot of our fellows ears. Um, the, the, the part that I was intrigued in is to also understand, given uh, how proactive Te Atiawa Taranaki Whanui are um, within the region, to, to really understand how are they thinking about innovation and partnerships across their assets to actually trial really different approaches. For example, with different models for sustainable housing uh, might be just one example, or different forms of regenerative land use um, as sort of pilot projects that could prove the economic model in other areas. So I, I realize Josh isn't here yet, but I just, I wanted to sort of put that down to see if anyone could had a, had a response to that. Yeah, I mean, what I will add is, you know, as, as Josh kind of said, was that every iwi throughout Taranaki is, is kind of looking at similar approaches. Um, one thing that perhaps um, if you sort of start looking at what they're offering their whānau in terms of the financial side of things and how they finance people into it, I think that's really interesting. Actually, some really innovative models around um, getting whānau into housing and partnering as iwi with whānau so it is it does become affordable and then having and then getting into the development side of it so it's sort of a holistic wraparound and I, th I think that's really exciting and I think the rest of us could actually learn quite a lot from what they're doing in terms of um, starting to challenge the housing model um, and, and Josh mentioned that they are open to social impact investing and things like that so if fellows are, are looking at that sort of thing I think they would be more than open to have those conversations. Mm. Thank you. Well, thank you, team. I absolutely appreciate it. I learned a lot, as I always do in these sessions. And I know that the fellows will look forward to watching the recording. And if you don't mind sharing the PowerPoint as well, because there's a lot of nice detail that you can actually read in there and, um, and actually appreciate it. And I will be sending this recording back to you that you can have a look at as well.